So as we uh, start to talk about plants uh, and get into the, the plant kingdom, what we're going to do is first uh, talk about the way that the kingdom is divided into phyla. Uh, some of the times we'll be discussing them by the name of the phyla. Some of the times we'll be discussing um, a group of organisms by a different name uh, based on either another characteristic or something that's much more common uh, about the group. Uh, and some of them, and we're not going to really cover all the groups. We're going to cover uh, a few of them in a little more detail, and then uh, some of them in, in, in a lot more detail. Spend a lot more time on them. So the first thing is just to kind of see who's here, what are their general um, characteristics or traits, uh, and what are they called uh, scientifically, and what are the more common names for the groups. Uh, and then from from that'll be this particular lecture. Then we're going to focus on a few of the specific groups, go over their life cycles and their characteristics, uh, and then we will um, then go into more details of the groups that have a, a lot more members. So uh, what we're going to do right now is look at this um, tree here, uh, starting off with the ancestral algae. And at this point here, going from ancestral algae to land. Plants. So that's this branch here. So all these members are all belonging to this particular group. Adaptations to land is the origin, you know, let's say the origin of land plants. So uh, starting from the top, one of the first uh, groups here are called hepatophyta. Uh, they're also known as liverworts. They are non-vascular plants, and so that's what's gonna we're gonna find here. I'll break it down before we get there. So uh, here we're gonna have the origin of vascular plants. So for all these groups here. Uh, um, and that means these first three up top here are non-vascular. And then that's going to be one of the terminology we, we refer to, vascular versus non-vascular plants. Um, and that'll have to do with uh, xylem and phloem and the, the way in which they move um, the fluids through their body and um, can create structural support for themselves. Uh, the liverworts are um, a group that contains about, oh, I'll try to write this in a different number, about 9,000. And I'm going to write this. This is a rough number of known species. So that's what I'll be writing here in green is the not the exact number of species, but roughly what we know about them. The bryophyta are the group we refer to as mosses. This is the one that we're going to then focus in on for the non-vascular plants. So we'll go over the moss life cycle, some of the structures of mosses, and some of their uh, habits and uh, where they live and so forth. Mosses are um, a little bit bigger group with about 15,000 known species. And the Anthocerophyta uh, is a group known as hornworts. And they're a much smaller group uh, with only about a hundred um, roughly known species. So those are the names of the groups uh, which are considered the non-vascular plants, the liverworts, mosses, and hornworts. And of those, we are going to then uh, go in on uh, focusing in on the bryophytes as the next lecture following this one, their characteristics, tra uh, traits, and their, and their life cycles. So then we kind of move on to the vascular uh, plants. Uh, and then we have the lycophyta, which are the club mosses. So technically they're not a moss. So this is the problem with common terminology. Like people use the term jellyfish uh, or starfish. The, those organisms aren't fish. Uh, they're invertebrate uh, animals. Um, very different from one another. Just because they swim, people call them fish. Uh, again, worms. Uh, there are so many different phyla of worms. Um, and just because they're sort of elongated uh, and round, typically they're called by that particular name. And 
it doesn't necessarily imply anything about relationships uh, between the organisms. And so we see this with plants here, different groups referred to as the true mosses and another group is the club mosses. Um, but you see that they're, one is vascular and the other is non-vascular. The lycophyta um, have about 1,200 you're not going to necessarily have to know these numbers, except in the end when I go through a sort of a comparison as sort of uh, why we're focusing in on one group versus another. Uh, now we have the spore-forming uh, terophyta, which are the, the ferns. Uh, so the uh, terophyta is a much bigger group. At about 12,000 uh, species. And then we'll get into the origin of seeds. Which also means that these are plants that produce seeds, and these other plants do not produce seeds. Like I just mentioned, the, the ferns are spore producing. Uh, so this is what we're going to find is difference in the life cycles of these groups up here uh, are the production of spores, um, whereas these down here, gymnosperms and uh, angiosperms, which we'll talk about in a second here, um, they're the groups that are going to pr produce seeds. Um, Jim, I left a little bigger gap here because, and I wrote them a little bit different. And so um, I've been writing the names of the phyla, uh, the hepatophyta, the bryophyta, lycophyta, terophyta, uh, and down here the anthophyta, uh, which I'll get to kind of last here. Um, it's the last on the list, but I'm going to talk about the um, gymnosperms last because I kind of break those down. Uh, and so these are the, what we're called the angiosperms. Or flowering plants. And they're going to have what we know of roughly about 250,000 uh, known species. So as far as the members, you know, looking at them here, this is so far uh, the, the large, and it's going to remain the largest group, right? So this will also be the one where we then in lectures spend the most time and have extra additional um, lectures breaking down structures and cycles and other sorts of things for the, the flowering plants. Coming back to here, of the two groups of seed forming plants, we have essentially gymnosperms and angiosperms. If I use, I use those terms, those are ones you'll see. The angiosperms are the anthophyta, so it's just a, a phyla. Right? The gymnosperms are not a phyla. There are actually uh, about three phyla here. Uh, those phyla include the ginkgos, uh, the cycads, and these are all different phyta, so, so, or phyla, which then, so ginkgo phyta, cycad phyta. Um, we have the conifers and the nidophytes. In terms of numbers, uh, what we're going to have are the, for the ginkgos, so you'll definitely remember this one, one. There's one ginkgo bilova, one species of ginkgo known to exist. Right? So it's a whole phyla of life, of plants, of kingdom plantae, phylum, ginkophyta, one species. That's it that lives in it. Um, and I have one growing in uh, my yard. Um, it's a very ancient uh, plant, which we'll talk about a little bit when we talk about the gymnosperms. Uh, then we have the cycads, uh, which uh, we'll talk about those a little bit. Um, about roughly 180 known uh, species. One eight zero uh, for those. Um, the nidophyta. We have. I'm just looking at my numbers here. I think it's about 95 species known. Sorry, that's nidophyta. I put that in the conifer section. And the conifers are the bigger uh, group with about 600. species. And, and so that'll be the one we focus in on. So after going through this, uh, what we're going to do is next talk about mosses as a type of non-vascular plant. 
Then we'll start to talk about vascular plants. And we're going to skip over the club mosses and go right on to the, the ferns and the terrafida. In addition to being uh, vascular, there'll be these spore forming plants. Then we'll move on to the seed bearing plants. We'll talk about seeds and seed production and different strategies. And then the two major strategies uh, between gymnosperm and angiosperm. And for the gymnosperms, we'll focus in on the, the conifers. And then as we get to, to the anthophyta, the flowering plants is where we'll really cover a lot of different sorts of things. So they have, we're going to have like monocots and dicots and, 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 and uh, different, types of different types of flowers and a variety of different uh, ways of uh, forming fruits and all sorts of things that we'll spend a lot more time on than the others. And you can see now the reason why we'll spend so much time because there's a lot uh, more members of this group and there's even though it's still one monophyletic group there's a lot of diversity within that group to focus in on uh, and so that's kind of where we're going to go with the next sort of steps uh, covering the plant kingdom